to put you in jail. They maximize mandatory sentencing to make sure you're in jail longer. And because of the reality of power, Jasmine, that means that people of color and the poor and gender and sexual minorities and other marginalized groups are always going to be disproportionately harmed as a result of that because they don't have the institu institutional power or wealth to be able to fight it as effectively as others. And that is as a result of generations of theft, but that's another subject. Going into what you're talking about, the best way to deal with these problems is number one, look at the crimes that shouldn't even be crimes in the first place so that no one should be sentenced to anything. Any, of any color for any reason or anything else. Ending the war on drugs, ending the war on guns, ending the war on income, ending the war on sex work. Ending these things, which not only does great good in those issues, like for example, how addiction will be made better and fewer people will be addicted when they can actually get help, and the cartels that make a fortune on the war on drugs will be disempowered and all of that, but it will also lead to a massive reduction as much as uh, my understanding with in this, uh, um, this referendum that's coming up on decriminalizing basically effectively ending the war on drugs or at least the imprisonment for the war on drugs in Oregon, they said that it would reduce the amount of sentencing by 91%. That gives, that's, just, that's just drugs. That gives you an idea of how much of a reduction in the number of people being sentenced for anything would happen to begin with. The next thing we do is we end immunity. Qualified immunity, absolute immunity. When we can demonstrate that there are judges and prosecutors and police officers that are actively working to infringe upon the rights of accused people Right now, they cannot by law be held accountable if they themselves decide that what they did was reasonable. And judges, even if they admitted what they did wasn't reasonable, they still can't be held uh, responsible, just like politicians can't, because they have absolute immunity, where they just get immunity, period. We need to end immunity, and, the re and when you end immunity, now they're held just as accountable as you and I are. If a judge, if it turns out, we've seen far too many times where a judge is shown to intentionally be putting people of color and other marginalized communities away for exponentially longer terms than they do for wealthier people and white people. At best, they get a slap on the wrist. They usually are allowed to continue being a judge and they are not held legally. They are not held civilly liable as a result. When we end immunity, that ends and that acts as a deterrent to that. I cannot promise you that we will end every single aspect of systemic racism. And the reason for that is because we are talking about a thing that has been around longer than the United States has. We are talking about a centuries-old policy that will potentially take generations to truly dismantle so that we can eventually reach a point where your skin color, my skin color, and anyone else's skin color is nothing more than just an interesting thing about them, that it isn't anything that's used to judge you positively or negatively. In the meantime, what we can do is harm reduction. We can get rid of the policies that are the most acutely harming all of us, but especially the most marginalized among us, and we can work to dismantle those other things, but by immediately getting people out of jail, expunging the records, letting them return to their families, letting them be able to work, holding the bad actors in government accountable, that will be a massive improvement of what we have now. Thank you. As I said, I'm gonna go over here. It is super, super hot up here, because there's also